Okay, welcome everyone to this continuation of what is linear algebra. Today I'm going to talk about or to tell you about a little bit what is the determinant. And my main focus will be basically to explain um, why is this a definition natural. So when I first saw it, 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 it's probably the same for everyone. When you first see it, it's a little bit mysterious. So why should why should you care in particular if you I've just seen the, uh, let's say the definition by the Leibniz rule or whatever, so it's a kind of uh, numerical invariant to assign to a matrix. It's not quite clear why it should be interesting or anything. And that's what I'm going to explain today because it actually comes up very natural. And in some sense, you could have invented the notion of the determinant. And the idea is as follows. Um, let's say you have a unit square here um, so this is just one, one, and this is just, let's say, R2, right? And here's the first unit vector. Let me, let me make, let's say it's green. Uh, the other one is something like a blue, the other unit vector. And the area of, well, of uh, this rectangle, the square, we agree it to be, let's say, one, right? You, you have to normalize it somehow, and why not one? And every matrix, uh, any linear transformation acts on this unit square by sending it to, to something different. And this is how it works, right? The, the, the matrix is kind of a, uh, an action on R2 in this case, an action on space. And it will send geometric objects to some slightly distorted other geometric objects. And so it will send a unit square. You can think about it. That's kind of what, what makes this thing linear. It will send a unit square to something that is still reasonably uh, rectangular to this. Uh, well, this is the action of the, the matrix. And in this case, I've chosen, well, this matrix here, whatever. Um, so it will rotate the unit square a little bit and stretch it a little bit in one direction. And how does it work? Well, let's have a look at the first column and the second column. These are really just the images of the two unit vectors. So let's do uh, the first column. So minus one, uh, one over two. This is actually this vector here. So it goes minus one and one over two. And the other one is the image of the other vector. It goes uh, minus a half, minus a half, minus a half, minus a half. So here you go, right? And well, that the shape itself is, is just a corresponding rectangular well shape you could build from those two vectors. And the idea people had, so kind of, okay, this was kind of well known for ages. And what, what people wanted to do is, well, there should be some numerical invariant that you associate to a, to a matrix that tells you, well, let's say this is, has area one. So area equals one. And then you operate with some matrix and you get a new shape which with a new area and whatever the new area is, it basically should be the determinant of your matrix. And so if this would be M. Um, so the determinant should come on, somehow measure how the uh, area of the unit, unit square changes um, when you apply uh, your matrix. So that, that sounds like a reasonable concept, but it, it, first of all, it shouldn't be too bad. Like you're looking for uh, the area of uh, some rectangular like, like shape. You should be able to write down a closed formula for that. And it seems like a very natural invariant you could associate to a, to a, to a matrix. Yeah. This is basically the story. There, there is some sign and I will explain the sign now. But basically, it's all about area. Well, almost, right? There's a sign. And this works as follows. So let's just, let's just analyze where the sign comes from. And so really, if you calculate determinants, there, there basically can be three different answers. You can get a positive determinant. That looks like an area. You can get a negative determinant. That's a bit weird. What is, what is a negative area? I will explain it I will explain now. And of course, you can get zero which is kind of this extraordinary case. And this just means basically um, your matrix takes a unit square and collapses it 
to align in this case. So that you, you, lose, um, you lose dimensions in the process. Right? You would take a whatever a higher dimensional cube. So the higher dimensional analog, I will show it to you in a second. The higher dimensional analog would be what is the image under the whatever, the unit hypercube. And it might collapse in some in some dimensions, and then then there is no reasonable notion of area or volume anymore. So it, it's just zero. Okay, so zero is kind of this extraordinary case where things collapse. Um, yeah, that's kind of easy to understand. But what is the sign? The sign is a bit weird. What what, what is what is square of of area minus five? And it's the following idea. So I have two matrices here: or a purplish matrix and a, and a bluish matrix. And well, I haven't. Well, so, so let's say the, the purplish matrix is A, B, C, D, and the bluish matrix looks very similar. It's A, B, minus C, minus D. And you would do the same thing. You would look where the uh, corresponding unit square goes. So this is the image of the purple matrix, and this is the image of the blue matrix. Right? It, it's, it's kind of the same idea. Um, the greenish first column is the image of the first unit vector and the bluish second column is the image of, of the second unit vector. Same here and here. So far so good, but you would observe the following. I mean, this is just really built such that whatever thing, whatever area this is, uh, uh, I have written it down, it's AD minus BC. Uh, whatever area this guy has, um, whatever area this guy has, this one has the same area because it's just the same shape flipped along the x-axis. So it's also A. Um, but there's a, 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 a minor difference, like a sign difference. That's exactly, the, that's exactly the sign. I should learn how to talk. That's exactly the sign. So the sign difference comes up as follows. Um, you could think of having th those um, those shapes of ha having an orientation. So you would draw some kind of line from the first unit vector, so there's an order on this unit vectors to the second unit vector. So this kind of, this shape kind of turns around in counterclockwise direction. While this shape, on the other hand, if you do it the same, in the same way, so from the image of the first unit vector to the image of the second unit vector, this shape turns in clockwise direction. And that's exactly the sign. So the sign tells you uh, about the orientation of, of, the corresponding, of the corresponding polytope you get after applying your matrix. So it could change orientation, and that's encoded in the sign. In, in less fancy terms, um, the determinant of the first matrix is just a B minus C D. This is minus the determinant of the second matrix of the blue matrix because the blue matrix kind of inverts the orientation um, of uh, basically of the space you act on. So let let me do this, this again. So here's R two, and if I would do the same kind of idea and I would draw a line from the first unit vector to the second unit vector, like a rotation, um, then it would be in counterclockwise direction, right? So this is preserved. So this is determinant one, this is inverted. So this is determinant minus one or determinant, I shouldn't say one, it, might, it could be anything. Determinant is, is plus, determinant is minus. So determinant is positive or negative. Okay, let me summarize. The determinant is all about the area of the corresponding image of, um, of, the, of the polytope, of the, of, the, of the unit square. And for a two by two matrix, you can just write it down. It's, it, well, let's say your matrix is A, B, C, D, then the area is A, D minus B, C. And this, the area is the absolute value of this. And if you remove the absolute, absolute value, so you also care about signs then you would keep track of the orientation change or possible orientation change. And that's, that's really what there is all about. I mean, in higher dimensions, it's the same, it's the same thing. Um, you would have your matrix here and you would have, you would have a, a, well, let's say a, 
black column, you would have a green column, and you would have a blue column, you would have some. So this is uh, uh, the unit cube in R3. And you would look at the images of the black, the green, and the blue column. And you would get a new kind of cube-like thing. And you would like to, to know what its, what its area. And the area turns out to be, in this case, 4 over 5. And the determinant measures exactly the area of the thing up to a sign, because potentially this guy has a flipped orientation. And that's all there is about. That's all there is you want to know about the determinant. So that's the idea. And the only remaining question is, well, there are two questions. So can you make this precise? And really for each dimension, basically, can you write down a closed formula um, to compute those, those volumes, those higher dimensional volumes? And that's exactly the formula for the determinant. I will show you how to, to compute the determinant in a second. But um, there's also an abstract approach to the determinant. And it, it basically works as follows. Um, so the determinant is kind of the unique function that assigns to a matrix a scalar, such that, well, kind of the, the unit square is uh, normalized to be of, of area one. And then you have those two properties. So this, the, the blue property, the last property, is keeping track of the orientation. And the other one is kind of a natural property you you could think of uh, if, if you just stack those um, those images of the rectangles of, of those, those rectangles together. So there is a unique function that satisfies certain properties that you would naturally write down if you would think of, of the determinant in, in the way I, I tried to explain, namely the determinant as being. Um, kind of a measure for how area and volume changes under applying matrices. And, okay, so this unique function, blah, 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 blah. And the point is, it's what is not trivial that it, this exists. And this is exactly the, the formula for the determinant. The formula for determinant. And this formula, as I try to explain, is up to assign just the area of the corresponding polytope. And if you think about it a little bit, it's not super easy to write it down, but it shouldn't be super hard. So someone should have done that before. It sounds like something people would have done, well, in the 1700s, something like that. And, and yeah, indeed, people have done this a long time ago. And this is how it works. Um, it's not super easy. It, it gets pretty messy. I can already tell you um, what I would do. This is my would be my approach. You, you would kind of internalize this this idea that the determinant tells you something about about geometry. I would try to understand why this definition or why those properties are important. Then do some examples using the following method that I'm going to explain. And at one point, nobody really calculates determinants anymore because it, of random matrix, it just gets too tricky for a 20 by 20 matrix. It's just a lot of work, but for a computer, it's easy. So again, one of the points of linear algebra is feed it into, understand what's going on, feed it into a machine, and that's it. So here's how you would calculate it. And um, this calculation method should also tell you a little bit that this is going to explode, right? The, the number of calculations is going to explode. You need to do uh, if you increase uh, the dimension of your matrix or range of your matrix. And it works as follows. So if you have a matrix, then the determinant is given by this very fancy looking formula. So it's, it's, it's a sum over a product. That's already not, that's already not very good, but anyway, so it's, it's used. It's a sum over um, elements of the permutation group of the symmetric group. So this sum is already of order n factorial. That's a huge number, right? Like that's, that's one for n equals one, two, three. So it would be for two, it's, it's two. This is two, this is two by two formula that we, that we have seen here. So you have two summons. 
for three, that's what I'm going to explain in a second. You already have six summons. For four, you already have 24 summons, and this just explodes. Um, for a computer, it's, it's still doable up to a certain point, but for a human, it's, it's it, it might be a little bit too tough. There are some, some ways to calculate the determinant in, in a different fashion. And for certain matrices, there are the shortcuts. But in general, you basically can't make it much easier than this. And this is how it works. OK, so I was just raffling a little bit about um, that this is really complicated or really hard. And you should be discouraged if it takes you a while to do it. So just do some small examples, get the hang of it, try to understand the idea. Um, get familiarize yourself with the idea why this is why this is useful and at one point let the computer do it um, but anyway i'm starting waffling so let me explain how this actually is going to work so let's say you have this matrix here and there's nothing fancy about this matrix it's the usual way to, to denote a matrix so a11 a12 and so on and how to compute the determinant well what you would do is so it's a three by three matrix so you write down all permutations of three symbols. There are six of them. I've written them down for you. There's the identity, which, which I just denote by three strands. So, um, so the, 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 the terminology or the way to read those pictures is a really, really nice way to encode the symmetric group. It's as follows you, in my notation. You look at the bottom and you look at the top. So this permutation sends one to one, sends two to two, sends three to three, so it doesn't do anything. Uh, this permutation sends one, two, three to the third position. It sends two to, well, two to the, to, to the second position, and then sends three to one to the first position. So this is the permutation one to three and two to itself, for example. And this is just, this is just identity. And this is a really neat way to encode permutations. Uh, just as those crossing diagrams, right? The permutation shuffles things, so there will be some crossings. And the only thing you need to do in order to calculate the, the determinant is now to look at those pictures and you count the number of crossings. So here's one crossing, here's one crossing, and that's the sign. So if this number is odd, if this number is odd, then that's the sign. So here you get a minus because the number is odd, here you get a minus. Here you count two things, so you get a plus. You count two things, so you get a plus. Here I count uh, three things. Um, maybe I should do it this way. Um, so here you count three things, one, two, three. So you get again a minus. And here, of course, you count zero, so you get again a plus. So that's the sign. That's this sign here. And then you just take the, the product of the elements you see, and it works as follows. Um, let's do this one together, OK? So you do A1, 2, 3, and you look at the image um, under the permutation. So, um, so let's do um, maybe, the, maybe the fancy one again together. So 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. Um, one goes to three, two goes to two, and three goes to one. Let's do another one. This one, um, one, two, three. And just look at the image. One goes to two, one goes to two, to the second position. Uh, two goes to one, and three stays where it, where it is. Um, And yes, the type of those two should be swapped. Okay, but otherwise it's it's exactly it's exactly what it is. So one goes to one. So one, two, three. One goes to one. Uh, two goes to three. And finally, three goes to two. And you take the sum of those. And that's the formula for the determinant. Okay. Um, that's it. Thank you very much for watching.